Hey everybody, welcome back to another video discussing the latest news and events in Ukraine on July 12, 2024. I returned from the front lines of Ukraine. We went from Kharkiv all the way down to Kyrgyzstan. We'll have videos and pictures to post at a later date before I start showing you guys what we did on the front lines and the aid that we did deliver. It was a very long week. I'm very glad to be back in Kyiv, but as you guys can see, I am in a power outage. I'm only averaging a couple hours of power per day, so that means no air conditioning, no Wi-Fi, nothing. I'm sitting here in the dark. I can go to a cafe and I can go to some workspaces, but I kind of just want to get the video out for you guys today in peace and quiet. Starting off with the map update for Ukraine. Like I mentioned, I will have an extensive frontline update from what I saw with my own eyes when I returned back home to the United States with pictures included. But for now, let's go through all of the public open source information that we're tracking in Ukraine. So starting here in Volvchansk, we have some very good news for the Ukrainian armed forces. Liberations continue just to the northeast of Volvchansk. Ukrainian armed forces continue to extend that liberated space. This is very huge because Ukraine moved a lot of their military up here to be able to deal with this incursion from the Russian armed forces. Big decisions were made at the time to allow Ukraine to strike into Russian territory, which also helped the Ukrainian armed forces with this liberation mission. The Russians were able to cross the river in Volvchansk to get into the main part of the city. We'll keep tracking that and see if the Russians are able to advance any further. Directly north of Kharkiv, which is also north of the town of Lipsy, Ukrainian armed forces are also having successful operations in that direction liberating territory. They got about half of Hilboke liberated. Very good news for Ukraine. Other areas we're seeing Ukrainian successes just to the east of Lehman. We have multiple sections of small Ukrainian counterattacks, but it is resulting in Ukraine taking that territory back, liberating it, and they are controlling it. I haven't been able to do a map update in a few days, but seeing this here is really good sign that Ukraine is having successes in this forest near Kremina. Now we get to the not so good news, and that is the Russian advancements across much of the Eastern Front. And I saw a lot of this with my own eyes. And again, I will talk about this more in the future, but this is just to the north of Solidar. Russians gained some ground there. They haven't been able to gain further ground in Shasivyar. The news that we're getting out of there and what I've seen with my own eyes from this direction, it's not looking good for, for Shasivyar. I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. Um, Shasivyar will likely be occupied by the Russians in the coming future. In the Torets direction, evacuations have begun. Just to the east of the city and to the south of the city, Russians have advancements. Ukraine is pushing back on these advancements with some of their own counterattacks, but the Russians have started to overwhelm the Ukrainian defenses in this direction. In the Pokrovsk, Munigrad, and Mykolaivka direction, which is the area between Avdivka, the Russians continue to advance. And that roadway, that T0504 that I've been telling you guys is so significant for Ukraine to be able to hold is now in shelling distance. It's a dangerous road. They're not allowing anybody to travel on it because the FPVs and the artillery are reaching that territory at this time. Krasnogorivka, which is just to the west of Donetsk, the Russians have gained further ground and continue to expand their occupation in that city. Just to the northeast, they got a little over halfway occupied of Krasnogorivka at this point. Keep you guys updated for the further Russian advancements. The good news for the southwest of Donetsk is this large chunk. We've been tracking many Russian advancements here over the past few weeks. However, there are no Russian advancements and Ukraine maintains control of the territory in this direction. Overall, you guys, I saw many of these cities with my own eyes. We went to multiple frontline cities to deliver aid and supplies to the soldiers. And there are very good defensive lines built many kilometers back from these cities. I do expect the Russians to occupy multiple cities in the near future. However, I don't feel they're going to get any further. Those Ukrainian positions are just immaculate. I'll have more to say about that in the future. Whereas Russia's loss is as of July 12th, we have 1,030 troops, 23 APVs, 84 vehicles and field tanks, 9 tanks, 48 artillery systems, 26 UAVs, 5 cruise missiles, 2 anti-aircraft warfare, and 8 special equipment. All right, guys, so mid-recording, I completely lost power inside of my apartment. So I'm out here at a beautiful cafe in downtown Kiev. We'll do the rest of the video from outside. 
Biden defends U.S. restrictions on Kyiv, striking military targets deep inside Russia. I feel this is a very weak policy, and the NATO conference was not a strong NATO conference. I really needed to see them allow Ukraine to strike inside of Russian territory, especially those military bases with U.S. and Western-supplied weapons. If Ukraine is going to want to succeed this year and going forward, they need to annihilate those Russian bases. Not to mention the fact that we had a ridiculous Biden gaffe last night at the NATO conference. Just take a listen for yourself. This war, Ukraine will prevail in this war and we'll stand with them every single step of the way. That's what the compact says, loudly and clearly. And now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. President Putin. We're going to beat President Putin. President Zelensky. I'm so focused on beating Putin, we got to worry about it. Anyway, Mr. President, I'm better. You are a hell of a lot better. So, overall, I think it was a weaker conference. I really needed to see some strength from the West to be able to support Ukraine, allow them to use our weapons to strike on those Russian bases, because just to keep in Ukraine to strike the Russian occupied territories in their own country is just putting a Band-Aid on the situation. It's not going to help Ukraine win. It's just going to help Ukraine maintain. And also, I don't think it's going to sway anybody's choices for the 2024 election. The media is completely focusing on Joe Biden right now. Donald Trump is spewing at his orange Hitler rallies and not even and going on right-wing podcasts, and the media is just completely ignoring him. They used to be obsessed with him. They used to hold on to every single word Donald Trump says. But now, apparently, only President Biden is getting that energy from the mainstream and corporate press. The calls for Joe Biden to step down for president continue. We'll see if that transpires. I do plan to go to the Democratic National Convention later in the summer. Also, from the United Kingdom, they have not yet agreed on Ukraine using storm shadow missiles on Russian territory. Similar to the United States, this is a, an, a fear of escalation policy from Western countries. Like I said, with the United States news and pre President Biden making a gaffe and also just not allowing Ukraine to use our own American weapons on the Russian territory, I feel it's also a, a weak policy by the United Kingdom, which has traditionally been strong in support of Ukraine. Kyiv came out and said they can push Russia out of the southern territories if the U.S. lifts the restrictions on deep strikes. The United States should allow Ukrainian forces to use American weapons to carry out strikes against military targets in Russia and occupied Crimea, President Vladimir Zelensky said in an address at the Reagan Institute in Washington, D.C. on the 9th. Zelensky delivered remarks on the sidelines of the NATO summit in Washington, a three-day conference celebrating the alliance's 75th anniversary, focusing on heavily on Russia's war against Ukraine. Imagine how much we can achieve when all restrictions are lifted, Zelensky says. Definitely a lot can be achieved if those restrictions are lifted. There's still plenty of issues on the front lines, which again, I will go into as soon as I get back home to the United States internal problems, external problems from the lack of support, real support, strong support from the West. But things also do need to change inside of the Ukrainian military at the command level and things that I just have no control over with our fundraising and support for the armed forces of Ukraine. Well, news from Donald Trump and Viktor Orban, who are basically the same person. He says, Peace Mission 5.0. He met Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago today, discussed ways to make peace which uh, he says he's going to solve it. And absolutely not. Donald Trump has no plans to solve the war in Ukraine. He will allow Vladimir Putin to keep territory and push further. If anything, he will completely ignore Ukraine. And we will, if anything, Donald Trump will completely ignore Ukraine and allow Vladimir Putin to continue to take territory. Here in Kiev on Monday, we had those atrocious strikes on the Children's Hospital. And the day of that terrorist attack, Russia decided to celebrate by serving chicken Kiev in an absolute show of disrespect to Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. I've said it many times and I'll say it again, it's absolutely disgraceful that Russia gets to sit on the UN Security Council. And it's more of a reflection of the joke that the United Nations has become over time. The fact that you have a genocidal dictator, Vladimir Putin and his country, including this ongoing full-scale invasion of Ukraine, to have them hosting the presidency of a Security Council which means the security of the United Nations while they're committing complete genocide of the Ukrainian people is a joke. Let me know what you think of Russia sitting on the UN Security Council in the comment section below.
Rolling Cat on Twitter and also their website put out a great open source intelligence document showcasing in detail with photos that it was Russia that struck the Children's Hospital. Now you're wondering, Andrew, how could that be the case? Well, I wasn't here in Kyiv that day. We were traveling the front lines, visiting cities and people. So I was not here for that attack. However, Russian propagandists got to work immediately saying that Ukraine struck their own hospital with bullshit pictures. So it's been an extensive work to try to undo the misinformation and disinformation campaigns by Russia. Another source you guys can check out on Ryan Macbeth's YouTube channel. He did a stream a few days ago, full hour and a half deep dive into the attack on the hospital and completely destroying the Russian propaganda narratives. For an on the ground video, just one hour after the missile attack in Kyiv, go to Johnny FD's YouTube channel and you can get an on the ground perspective, clean up. Johnny, he was recording as much as he can, but I personally saw videos of Johnny helping clear rubble, get water to the people, and document the terrorist attack on that hospital. Had a really good push the other day, you guys. I know there are so many amazing campaigns that are being released. So many NAFO campaigns now by YouTubers, and you guys subscribe to so many people that are pro-Ukraine. Uh, it's getting saturated, you guys, all right? And it's hurting fundraisers that already exist. So I'm asking you, can we please finish our campaign before I leave Ukraine? We are now at 66% at $14,000, $69 out of $21,150. I already delivered this truck here to Ukraine on the latest NAFO convoy. I will have content, video, pictures from the convoy to be posted in the coming days. And a big shout out to subscriber Susan for a $1,500 donation. And Susan has donated $1,500 on every campaign that we've had to date absolutely amazing and if you've donated on every campaign thank you so much for your support support my work thank you to everybody that's following me back on twitter i got my new twitter account i've been posting of course you guys can join the discord server follow me on instagram follow me on facebook i'm all over social media if you guys want further content beyond these youtube videos support my work here in ukraine and beyond and independent journalism and the humanitarian work that goes into it because we do include humanitarian efforts into my news reporting. Click that buy me a coffee link, become a member of the YouTube channel. Thank you guys so much for all the personal support for Mercado Media. That's the video for today. It might have been a longer one. I had a lot to talk about, lots of news to go over. I do have more to talk about with the front lines, but with operational security, and I'm just still here in Ukraine. I'm gonna hold off on that when I get back to my own home country and my own home state of Minnesota. But I promise you, I guys, I have a lot to talk about and a lot to go into specifically on that frontline map. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you got that notification bell turned on. Join the Discord server so you guys get notified for when the latest videos drop. I am going to do streams walking around Kyiv. So if you guys want to see what Kyiv looks like in a live format and engage with the chat, engage with the community, I hope to see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a fantastic day.